Hello everybody, Slash and VC here. Let's play Cataclysm with our character Kanji Garakawa. I think I'm going to make a few changes to Kanji's outfit here before we get started. So here's what I'm thinking. The uh, riot helmet. Probably the best thing this guy could possibly wear, but I'm not sure. I'm going to switch it out for some firefighter gear just to see what happens. Well, another thing I want to do is these cargo pants are ripped and I have a spare set. So I'm going to take off the cargo pants. And I'm going to unload the cargo pants. Doo -doo. Here we go. There's four items in there. Unload those. And then in that pile, I have some new cargo pants. There. are. We'll put those on. Then I'm going to take off the riot helmet. <clears throat> Here's why. I'll do a quick comparison so you can see what I'm thinking about here. There's a riot helmet. Oops. Wrong key. Capital I. <laughs> to compare inventory items. So if I compare the riot helmet with this armor piece that's in the, uh, the stack right there, the firefighter helmet, the riot helmet is obviously better. Uh, so because it's got protection for the crown, ears, eyes, forehead, mouth, and nape, and the coverage is a little bit better as you can see. Uh, well, about the same, but it covers more. So you got a uh, nine bash, ten cut, or nine bash, ten cut. You got nine ballistic or ten ballistic, but the firefighter uh, helmet wins on acid fire and environmental. It's a little bit lighter, you know. But I can get more coverage by putting on the PBA mask and the nape protector. Actually, I want to compare the two nape protectors. I'm not sure which one's better, so let's compare those, because I'm pretty sure I can attach a nape protector to the firefighter stuff. So the mesh nape protector has protection for the ears and nape. And... Which one's better? 40%, 30%, 50%, 50%. Um, one of them's cooler. The Mesh Nate Protector is cooler, so we'll probably wear it. Then we've got the uh, Firefighter PBA Mask, which we can add to the Firefighter Helmet, right? So actually, just so we can look at the uh, mask, the mask itself is going to add the extra coverage for the eyes and the mouth that the riot helmet provides plus all the environmental protection and here's the thing it also provides glare protection it won't let water through fits me perfectly and will keep the glare out of my eyes which the uh, riot helmet has not been doing so let's take the riot helmet off and wear the firefighter mask the, here we go, the firefighter helmet. Oh, can't wear on the left eye. I've got something on my eyes, AR glasses. Okay, we'll take the AR glasses off. This mask will be way better than the AR glasses, that's for sure. Now this one is still grayed out. So I'm not sure what the graying and the whiting is about. Average coverage, 100%. Oh, here we go, we've got the shortcut to it here. Warms, bash cut, etc. Environmental. Okay, now is this conflicting? Okay, the wetsuit is <laughs> confl conflicting with my forbidden robot t shirt. Well, we may have to take the t shirt off. Let's take the t shirt off. I'm sure the wetsuit is better. There we go. And check. We got nothing conflicting right now. Now, I want to, uh, I think the way I've got to do this, if I want to put the nape protector on is, I have to look at the firefighter helmet and then say insert. Funny enough, I don't see insert. Okay. Oh, well maybe I can't wear the nape protector with this. Um, let's try this. Can I just put the mesh nape protector on? Can't be worn directly. Well, what it doesn't attach. <clears throat> it seems like I always go through this with the nape protectors <laughs> and the uh, and the chin guards. Always with the chin. But just to make sure I'm not. Does it attach to the mask? Is there an insert on here? Unload, reload. And no insert. 
Okay, I guess we can't wear the nape protector, unfortunately. Double check this one last time and then we'll move on. Yeah, no, we can't put the nape protector on here. But anyway, so our armor still look okay. So we've got uh, flame resistant socks. Let's look at this. We've got uh, flame resistant socks, leather gloves, steel toed sneakers. Oh, I've got transition reading glasses. I don't really need those. And I'm surprised they don't conflict with the mask. Police duty belt, which is carrying, I think, all my tools. Riot armor suit on the outermost layer with a wetsuit, long sleeve shirt underneath, cargo pants. All right. Now, when I unloaded everything, it probably went in my backpack. So here's one thing I want to do. I want to unload my backpack into my cargo pants as much as possible. So I'm going to unload that. And then what do you want to do with that? Well, um, we'll drop that. Drop, drop. Anything that won't go in my cargo pants. And then I'll just pick them back up. Well, we don't need the machete. We need the rubber hose, the IFAC pouch. And that's it. Actually, are we going to wield the machete? No, we're wielding the fire, fire axe. So we'll wield the um, fire axe and the halogen bar we'll store in the hiking backpack. Okay. We look a little different. We got the fire axe and the firefighter stuff mixed in with the riot stuff. Now, next order of business is this. What time is it? 5 a.m.? Perfect. Perfect. We're going to start early. I was going to go get the RV. However, I've decided this vehicle will do for now. Here's why. You probably already know this, but in, in case you missed a few episodes, the RV, which I'm sorry, Dwarf Elvish Diplomacy was kind of excited about me picking up the um, RV in the comments. I'm sorry, Dwarf, but... For now, I really don't want to take this route all the way down to South Northboro again. Because here, I believe, right there, is where we left the RV. And so, you know, then we've got to go around Northboro again. And there's a mansion there. And we get past that, we've got to drive past the FEMA shelter again. This is my currently only known route. And it is a daggum nightmare getting through parts of that i just don't want to do it again if we got to go pick this npc up in this cave i think we just take the vehicle i have now speaking of that i can sleep in the back seat right i don't see where i can install a bed in this thing uh, maybe that's theoretically possible um but i have to take the seats out to find out right but i can always put them back in so let me see if i can take the uh, back seat out because it's sitting right here. Can I remove... Oh, excuse me. Can I remove the back seat? So it's going to take a tool with bolt turning of tool. And that's not right here, huh? That's an adjustable wrench, I think. Do I not have an adjustable wrench? Slow crunch. Yeah, we've got one right there. All right, let's get our adjustable wrench. And examine the vehicle. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but this uh, vehicle menu is actually working a little bit better. I think the secret was I go into full screen mode uh, instead of using windowed mode. All the windows seem to be behaving better. So anyway, but, or maybe I just got a little better at things. So I'm going to highlight the area where the back seat is and hit remove. Then I'm going to go down to the back seat. It says I can remove it. I'm going to take, I'm going to do it. Uh oh, well. Uh oh. Well, I said I was going to do that. <laughs> It'll yield a seat. It'll take 15 minutes and everything I see is green. But are there hidden additional requirements? Oh, God. Wait, do this? No. Okay, well, hmm. What if I remove the seatbelt? Oh, yeah. It removed the seatbelt. No problem. Oh, wait. Now, did I have to remove. I have to remove the seat belt in order to remove the back seat. Let's see. Yes. Okay. Very good. Some parts are on top of other parts. Now, where did the seat go? Is it in my inventory? 
now. Ah, okay, it's on the square that I'm on. Can I get it? Okay, yeah, I can drop it right here. And we'll put it right back in if it turns out that I can't put a bed there. So now that that's gone, if I examine this vehicle and I highlight this empty frame here and I hit install, can I now install a bed? Bam! See, the bed wasn't even on my inventory list. Okay, brazing rod, welding rod, I've got all that stuff, I think. I need a mattress, which I can easily get, a settling torch arc welder, or... Now, the window is still not behaving entirely properly because... Oh! Oh, yep, it is. Look, I can actually make that move using the key I would think I could use. Oh, heck yes. <laughs> okay. So it'll take about 54 minutes. Brazing rods, welding wire, mattress, acetylene torch, welding kit, arc welder. Wait. Oh, okay, right. And lifting and strength to a small but comfortable bed. You can store items here. There's no place to attach a seatbelt. So you could get thrown from the vehicle. So don't use a bed for a driver's seat. <laughs> it's telling me <laughs> not to do. So I need two mattresses to bring over here if I'm going to make a full-size bed where this back seat was. But let's make sure we've got the brazing rod, welding rod, or welding wire, and or the acetylene torch and or arc welder. I think Kunji got all of that stuff, and it looks like I need about 80 charges of that. So let's look for arc arc yeah I've got an arc welder and let's look for the wire welding wire yeah okay the welding wire is right there below me and the arc welder is over there in the tools compartment okay so let's get the do 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 we've got 600 duct tape <laughs> yeah uh, 900 lead. Where did I get? Where did I get all the lead? Yeah, it's gotten to this point, folks. It's gotten to this point where I've got things I didn't know I had, and I don't know where the things are that I wish I knew where they were. I'm gonna guess what I'm looking for is under W right here, by the way. So God, please help me. But I've been playing this game for a long time, and I finally realized that usually this stuff is in alphabetical order. <laughs> So, you know, if any of you have been struggling with that, um, you probably don't need this PSA from me, but, yep, it turns out it's in alphabetical order. All right, now I'm going to drop the welding wire and the arc welder there. Now we need to go get some sheets. Uh, I think the sheets are on the bed, the mattresses are on the bed. There's Kunji's bed, but we're not going to mess with that. Zoom out just a fuzz so I can see what the heck's going on. What is that? Is that a table or a seat? Mm, I guess it doesn't matter. Hey, we'll get the stuff from the shoe. Uh, oh, ooh. I wonder if I ever... Did I even examine and strip all these bodies? I bet there's a lot of stuff we could get if we washed all their things and disassembled them and got into tailoring and all that. That's an electric blanket, not a sheet, so... But, here we have a bed. Um, I think if I disassemble it, deconstruct furniture, it's too dark, okay. Apply the flashlight and use the building menu to deconstruct furniture in that direction. I think I get a mattress when I do this, so I won't have to craft a mattress, thank God. Examine. There's a bed frame and a mattress there. Now I want two mattresses because I'm going to put two beds in there, right? So let's deconstruct that one also. Oh, and I want to put curtains in. That was the other thing I was going to say. So we're going to grab some sheets for curtains also. That way I can close all the windows and go to sleep. Then it's basically an RV at that point. Can I carry the mattress? No, of course I can't. But what I'm going to do is I'm afraid to haul it. Oh no, okay. Uh, I think, though, what's sitting there is a bed frame. I have to continue disassembling to move the bed frame, but I don't need the bed frame. So let's just take 
Put this all these mattresses out of here. Oops. Okay. Now the last thing we need. Actually, I think that's all we need. Oh, I need to take this other seat out. So let's examine this section here. I probably don't have to step right up to it like that, but uh, you know, why not? So we're going to remove the seat belt and then we're going to remove the back seat. Excellent. And we'll get the seat. That's a torn seat, by the way. Drop it right there. Now, actually, I want to get the rope to the rope there. Where's the other rope? All right, now we're seeing vehicle frame. So can I examine the vehicle like this and then uh, highlight that section first, hit install, and then search for bed. A lack something, the acetylene torch four charges. What an arc welder, 20 charges. Oh, the, I have the welding wire. Oh no, the arc welder. I forgot, that's got to have the arc welder fuel, which is the oxyacetylene. It's okay, I think we've got that. I just forgot to load my arc welder. Let's see. Hmm. Oxy? Oxygen tank. Um, acetylene? Acetylene torch. I don't think they have any t uh, charges though, do they? Compact tool for welding and cutting portable oxyacetylene torch includes even this menu is behaving correctly. Like I just hit the um, right bracket and it went down through the description like it should. So I love playing in full screen now. <laughs> everything works it includes a torch handle and cutting attachment it requires connecting to pressurized cylinders of an appropriate welding gas and I think that's what I don't have is an appropriate welding gas oh no oh no yeah so I've got a welding tank but I bet it's empty no 60 of 60 oxyacetylene. Okay, hold on. Now we may not have enough charges, but tank. Okay, well that's the one with the napalm. Let me grab the oxyacetylene tank. And we'll see if I can reload this torch over here. Reload the arc welder. You need a compatible magazine. Right, okay, so we're getting our welders mixed up. I'm sorry folks, but I'm not a welder myself. <clears throat> and I guess I need to get an education in it. So, okay. Grab the acetylene torch. Now, can I reload acetylene torch? Yes, I can. Now, how many charges does it have? 60. Okay, let's find out how many we need for the seat. Salmon. Install. Okay. Oh. Bed. Okay, we only need four charges. Okay. And we've got 60, so we're good. We can put a bed in here. <laughs> okay. Do it. Look at this. Kanji the mechanic. Wearing his firefighter outfit and carrying a fire axe. Select which component to use. The mattress. Bam! We put a bed right there. Is that big enough to sleep on though? I don't think I don't think you can sleep on if I examine it, I thought it would say that um hit X. Right. Um I thought it would say let me examine that. Describe furniture. You don't see any furniture here. Vehicle appliance, here we go. Frame roof, bed. 
What I'm trying to do is, oh, here, we can try this. We'll just try sleeping on it. Are you sure you want to sleep? All right, so we don't actually need a two tile bed to sleep on according to that. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, all the other beds in the game are two tiles. So let's go ahead and finish what we started. Examine. Right there, we want to install. Oh yeah, I'm excited. This is the first thing I ever did with a vehicle. Other than, well, let's see. With our Mark Crump character, we just replaced a fuel filter and an air filter. I was pretty excited about that, actually. Now, I noticed, okay. The first thing I did when I was getting ready for this episode is I was highlighting these areas, like where the car horn and the stereo system is. And I'm thinking, all right, can I put curtains in this vehicle? And I hit install. Well, if you search for curtain, there's an aisle curtain. But I don't know what that is exactly. But if I search for curtain, I only get aisle curtain. Then I noticed if I highlight like the, um, okay, now see these doors have, these have glass doors. More parts here. A door has a window so you can see out of it um, when closed it prevents people from entering or leaving the vehicle as we knew so anyway it has a window in it so can I put a window curtain in it so if you highlight the door with the window and then you search for curtain bam you get an actual curtain so I didn't know that there's how, how do you describe this Oh, that the um, the list of installable items is situational. <laughs> now, all I need is a sheet, I think. This is called a sheet over a window, closed that prevents people from seeing it. A door motor allows you to remotely open or close it from the vehicle controls. Ooh, really? So anyway, I just need sheets. And I think there's sheets in the prison. I don't know. But I'm going to, I think I'll take a pause because if I've got to go ransack that prison, um, that might be kind of boring. So let me go see if I can find some curtains in the prison and I'll be back. I'm back. Um, yeah, uh, look at this. <laughs> Isn't it capital P? Oh, excuse me. Capital P. A lock stumps you, the lock stumps you, the lock stumps you. Of course, I had my flashlight on. I don't even remember turning my flashlight on. But anyway, the lock stumps you, the lock stumps you. <laughs> I wasted so many hours just trying to get in that room. <clears throat> um, okay, here's the word. <laughs> There's not a lot of sheets in this prison. So I looked this up on the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Cataclysm, my new favorite website, uh, supposedly by disassembling a mattress. We can get a sheet. Let's try it. Do you know you can't zoom in while you're deconstructing? Okay. Now let's drag this mattress over here and we'll drag this mattress over here. Whoops. Up. Oh. Ah. Mm. Ah. Oh. Okay. Oh my god. My, my fingers are so clumsy right now. Okay, so we want to de dis disassemble. That's the shift nine. Yeah, disassemble the mattresses. I got four springs, 45 cotton patches, 16 wires, and four sheets. Oh, yeah, that was worth it. Okay, let's do the other one. Four springs, 60 cotton patches, 20 wires, and four sheets. Dear viewers, <laughs> if you're ever doing a prison escape and you need um, cotton patches or your bandages and you need wires for your lockpicks and you need sheets for whatever you need sheets for, actually, I think the sheets craft into bandages. Is that not correct? Let's look just real quick out of curiosity because i don't know if you remember but early on i struggled with that the makeshift bandage cotton sheet these are sheets does that mean that you can't craft them into bandages wait let's find out let's find out because i know i don't have any other thing here bandage 
If I said I wanted to craft this makeshift bandage, it would say, you don't have any cotton sheets or patchwork cotton sheets. You have sheets. However, I think that when you disassemble a sheet, it becomes patchwork cotton sheets. So actually, disassembling a mattress could yield a lot of bandages, I believe. Could be wrong, but I think that's the case. Uh, I don't think I need the cotton patches. I've already got some in my inventory. I don't think I need the wires. They're laying everywhere. Just, you know, that's just an idea to keep under your hat. You know what I mean? Put that, don't put that in your pipe and smoke it or anything, as we say. But that, that's just something to keep under your hat for next time. How do I get 12 cotton? Well, I've, I've got eight sheets now. How many do I need? One, two, I think, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Probably eight. And that gave me eight. So I should have enough to do window curtains all the way around. So let's examine the vehicle. And starting right here, can I install a curtain? Yes, I can. Now let's see how it works. Can I close that? Uh-huh. Yep, there is. You open the SUV's curtain. You close the SUV's curtain. Look at that. <laughs> yes! Okay, so we do need one, two, th yeah, all eight of those. But uh, just out of curiosity, we'll see if we can turn one into a bandage when we get done here, because that would make the prison escape scenario a little easier, I think. So we need to install a curtain here. There we go. All right, we'll use the nearby sheet. And then I think we need to, that's windshield. So it needs a curtain, right? Yep, there we go. Uh, did it do it? Uh-oh. Close. Close. Open. Close. Yep. There's nothing that can be closed. Open. Open. Okay, wait a minute. Close. Close. Okay. Close. Open. Alright, we've got an open curtain on that square. I was a little confused by it, but I think we've got it now. Alright, let's get the rest of these in here. One, two, three, four, five more. Okay, so we did that one. So right there, we need to install a curtain. Oh, okay. It just installed it with, like, no delay. That's what confused me before. Alright, right there, we need to install a curtain. Interacting with the vehicle. Oh, did I have to move around the vehicle? I'll bet I did. Because it's farther away from me. It was it gave me that interacting with the vehicle thing. Okay. Let's install a curtain right there. Install a curtain right there. So there you go. If you don't move yourself over there, it's gonna bring up an interacting with the vehicle thing. And let's install a vehicle right there. Or a curtain right there. There we go. I think some of these are closed. There's nothing that can be closed. Open. Uh-oh. That. Open. I appear to have a curtain on the windshield. <laughs> um... Oh, there we go. Okay, I used my directional button on it. Now, I can't then uh, close it the same way. Okay, so can I? Yep, okay, good. Now, I want to try closing all of them. Hmm? Oh, they, um, they join together. If they're in a line, they all close at the same time. 
But am I getting light in here? Is there like a, uh, oh no. Is there like some, I feel like I'm getting light in here. Uh, stereo system dashboard. Is it because there's a hole in the roof or? Huh. It does say there's. Oh, right there. I bet that roof is probably missing. Is there a mend? Is there a repair? Is this roof gone? So for that, I would need a sheet metal. I think that roof section is just gone. Yeah. Um. Okay. Very interesting about the way those curtains work, though. Yeah, you can't open them and close them individually once they're in a line. I would think I have sheet metal. Uh, let's view. Yep, sheet metal is right there. Let's fix that roof section. Let's highlight the part of the roof that's uh, destroyed right there hit repair go down to that part of the roof how many tr uh, we don't we need 10 charges to do it we have that let's do it see if we're still getting light in there because you know I want it to be dark in case Kunji wants to sleep during the day or hide or whatever also it's just good practice working on these vehicles Okay, that's done, and it shows a fully healthy roof there. Now, let's say I close everything. Is it going to tell me the light level? Yeah, lighting, bright. So for some reason, the corn, the uh, the curtains are not blocking all the light. Is it destroyed frame sections that are doing it? Because I ain't repairing this whole frame. There's light coming in from somewhere. I mean, the frame is damaged in all kind of places. Obviously. Uh, but yeah, for whatever reason, those curtains aren't working at all. Uh, well, that's uh, kind of a bummer. What do we got laying there? Chunks of steel, lumps of steel, and scrap metal. Where's that from? I guess from repairing the roof. That must be a must have been the output from repairing the roof. Well, hmm, I could probably figure it out. Oh, I was gonna say by closing all the windows. And, oh, oh, wait. Yeah, I, I, I can see right out of the vehicle. <clears throat> I'm seeing through the frame, apparently. Huh. Well, alrighty then. Oh, well, that didn't work, but that's okay. Um, I took the battery out of this car because I was going to go put it in the SUV. So let's put the battery back in and get our... Oh, the car battery is too heavy to pick up. Okay, we're going to have to slide it out like this then. And uh, I'm going to bring the gasoline with me over here. Uh, now, uh-oh. 
I don't remember where the battery was installed. Do I need to install it on the same square as the alternator or... Okay, that's where the alternator and the engine is at. And I don't know, but I don't think I have to put the battery there, do I? I mean, it's probably not good that the engine is right there in the front. You know? <laughs> Couldn't we have put the engine like underneath the car somewhere? I want to... Um, I, I guess I'll just put the battery right there. I don't know how... Well, okay, first we'll put it over here because I don't know if it'll work. So let's install the car battery. And it's still got charge. So we're good on that. Now I assume the engine will start. Now I want to take the... Actually, I think we'll fill this up with uh, gasoline. Yeah, so we do that by hitting, I think, uh, I can go over here where the tank is, like this. Where was that tank? There. I hit fill. Oh, I can choose which tank to fill. Look at these menus working like they're supposed to work. Isn't this wonderful? Thank you, full screen mode. Okay, um, I've got 2.8 liter in that one. Is there any reason to distribute the uh, gasoline? 0.9 liters now. And that probably emptied my jerry can. Yes, it did. Now we need to move these into the vehicle. Storage compartment. Now I think like we've got a wheel there. Let's move it closer to the back. We'll put... Hey, this bed didn't uh, appear to go... Oh, there's another damaged roof section. Might be letting light in. I don't know. The bed didn't uh, turn into one unit. Oh, well. Oh, well. We're learning. So let's say we want to move the 17-inch wheel. Uh-oh. Did it go under the car? Okay, maybe we can wield the wheel. Okay, what if we drop it right there? Okay, it went into the storage compartment that time. <laughs> okay, apparently you can't use that other menu here. Uh, let's go and drop the jerry can and the scissor jack and the lug wrench. We'll make that the tool compartment. We'll put the adjustable wrench in there, the acetylene torch. Oh. I'm looking for the welding wire. For some reason, I'm not seeing that. Uh, wire. That didn't work. Oh, it, oh, oh, I left the wire outside the vehicle. That's why. Sorry, we have to do this again now. We're going <laughs> to... Oh, God, help me. Okay, we're going to drop the scissor jack, the lug wrench, the uh, adjustable wrench, the acetylene torch. Over there. And what else? Okay, my arc welder and welding wire can go in there. That's a tool, and it's in alphabetical order slash MVC. Where's my tools? <laughs> there. Arc welder? No, not the two-way radio. Um... Yeah, welding wire right there. Okay, because that's all tool-related stuff. Actually, we could probably auto-sort all that stuff. We'd have to come up with four categories to auto-sort. But I'm really not that clear on exactly what I want to take with me. It's not going to be a huge trip. Oh, blanket. We need the blanket on the bed. Huh? So you can't drag things in and out of cars. This is what I've learned. You put your downfilled blanket in the SUV's bed. Hey, what's in the passenger seat over there? Flashlight. Okay. 
Speaking of that, my other flashlight died because I had it on this whole time. Now we've got a battery chargers. We should probably take out one of these storage compartments and turn it into a box battery charger. Uh, so we can charge things up if we have rechargeable batteries. Now there's a thing that I want to think about. Do we have rechargeable batteries? No, we don't. So it won't matter if we put a recharger in there right now. Uh, okay, I'm going to sort through my inventory items, figure out what I want to bring with me, and tell you this. I wasn't going to go straight for the um, NPC down here. I just need to go down to the cave to pick him up to kill the 100 zombies quest, right? But I'm going to have to lock him up probably because he'll get killed doing what I want to do. I want to come up here and drive up into the city and see how bad it is and see what the bees do. <clears throat> now, here's my thinking with this uh, you know, so-called mobile base thing that we've just started working on. First of all, I could drive up here to Light Industry and see what other repairs and additions we can make to our car. But anyway, we're not going to get sidetracked with that. I think that like right down here is a great place to park the mobile base for a few minutes. Maybe. Maybe. we got to go assess. I like being close to the fresh water so I can wash stuff. Now, what I don't like is that's a swamp. So that's not ideal. Uh, maybe up here it would be better, like in this area. We've got some forest, and maybe we've got a house here on the edge of the water. Because I know Kanji wants to build a canoe and start exploring the waterways. Trailhead. Uh, so anyway, where to park the car? I don't know. We need to look at where to park the car. So where's my axe? Yeah, wield the fire axe. I am hot, hungry, and thirsty. Let me eat and drink real quick. Mm, food. Oh yeah, it's over here. Eat. Oh man, our fruit jam is getting old. That's a bummer. Our bread is getting old. How old is it? It's old. It's 18 hours from becoming inedible. I wanted to make jam sandwiches, but... Mm. What's this doing? We got four days left on the cheese spread, mayo, butter, bologna, cranberry juice. What do we got? Pickles, marshmallows, graham crackers, fruit leathers, toastums. Oatmeal, dried rice, raw spaghetti, dehydrated stuff. Let's cook us a meal. Food. Um, I think the woods meat soup was pretty awesome. I can make two of those with the broth that I have. Yeah, let's make two of those. Um, was the bologna going off first, it seemed like? And then I've got dried beans, and I can use a charcoal cooker. Which we will put in our mobile base, for sure. But I'm not going to drive the mobile base up there right now. We'll just take the quad bike or the motorcycle and just do kind of a recon type thing. Uh, pour it into a container. Use the gallon size zipper bags, I guess. Well, how much of this stuff does it make? It's not going into the zipper bags. That's what's not happening. <laughs> Can I two liters casserole pot? <laughs> Oh my god. Where is the casserole pot? Okay. I guess it's over here in the tool section. Oh, no. Eat. What's meat soup? There we go. Oh my god. And a cookie. Because why not? Now let's drink some water. <clears throat> Uh, water? water? Oh. I gotta go over here. This is where we keep our water. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I see wax. What? Where's our water? 
No, we... Uh, oh, it's on the back of the bike. There we go. 37 clean water. There, we shouldn't be hungry or thirsty now. Okay, so are we ready to go have a look at the bees? I think so. In my inventory, I have this backpack. I can probably take the backpack off and throw it on. We haven't driven the bike much. I drove the quad bike a lot. Uh, but I haven't driven the motorcycle. We can just consider that our uh, recon vehicle. Let's see what I've got in here. I've got my shotgun, Molotov cocktails, pipe bomb, landmines, clean water, and spare. Ankle sheath, leather gloves, sneakers, socks, tack vest. I don't think this stuff needs to be in here. Um, I've got a little armor collection in here. We can sort that stuff into there. Okay, we'll just drop all our armor stuff here that we're not wearing. There. Now, if we drop our backpack, we're going to be basically unencumbered. Our current torso encumbrance is 32. And if we drop the backpack, which apparently has 108 items inside. Yeah, we're carrying something we don't need to be carrying. Um... Torso encumbrance is 14. It's not terrible. 108 items. <laughs> what is in there? Well, there's 25 items in the wallet. And do we not have anything in our cargo pants? Yeah, two items. Okay, unload the hiking backpack. We want as much stuff in the cargo pants. Well, no, we don't. We want to insert stuff into the cargo pants. Yeah, not on camera. We'll do that in a minute. Let's uh, let's go explore. I want to find out. Oh yeah, I think the motorcycle had something wrong with it. What's wrong with it? No party, no faulty parts. Battery is at 46%. It has gasoline. Eh. Should start. Hmm. There it goes. Why are we still thirsty, though? You know what we need to do to make sure I got the rubber hose? Yep, we've got the rubber hose. Uh, let's let go of the controls. We've got that running. Make sure that we bring the jerry can with us. Of course, we had the gallon size zipper bags if we needed them, but. Alright, let's drive up here see what's going on. Guess we'll drive about that far and then I'll take over. I can't manually accelerate. A lemming leaps from the deep water. Feral human spotted. Yep, he's still hanging out up there in the orchard where he was all along. I don't see any reason to bother him, per se. What's he got? Crowbar? Yeah, I mean, you know, what's the point? Uh, if I accelerate up to, like, 20 and then... I pick my driving destination. I wonder if it'll respect the new speed. Let's try it. Nope. He decelerates back to 12 miles an hour. Uh oh. I think I just heard a gunshot. You heard a crash. Stop driving? I heard a crash. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I heard a gunshot, but it was as we drove past that laboratory, so... I think it's very possible there's a turret in there shooting at something. 
We got more zombies fighting, more wood lice. Um, void spell effects. Spawn summoned monster. What? Magic spell effect? Huh? Wait, stop driving. You hear an explosion. The pupating zombie bursts. Oh, what? Hold on. <laughs> um, the pupating zombie bursts and gore-smeared winged beasts climb out of the corpse. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, I see it, too. Here, let's zoom in. Have we never driven past this before? I don't remember there being a van here. I don't remember this apparently police van <laughs> with the reinforced glass and shit. What? Okay, but anyway, hold on. I'm gonna, um, so. <coughs> There's a zombie cop. Zombie cop. There's the flesh raptor. Let's get a look. Oh dear. Only one flesh raptor emerged from the corpse, I guess? Okay, this small winged predator. Uh, notice, by the way, that my monster descriptions are, like, fully displayed now? Is that cool or what? Here it is. I've been recording for this game for, like, two or three months, and I finally got it configured. Yes! This is how it should look. Okay. Anyway. Uh, this small winged predator darts through the air on three thinly haired wings that look like stretched human hands. A sheer jagged spike juts out from the point where the wings meet. It looks like nothing you've seen on earth, and yet strangely it is made of human parts. Oh dear. I see the Z9 now too. Where the heck am I on the map? I'm sure I've been down this road before. I don't remember that van being there. Unless we... Did we cut through somewhere? No. No, no, no. We've cut through this field. I remember cutting through this field, trying to get back and forth without driving past the bees. But I don't recall this uh, van here. I don't know where we're at in our recording time. I probably better check real quick. See, now that I'm playing in full screen mode, it's kind of a hassle to check my recording time if I'm not diligent about it. On just a second, I'll be right back. Alright, looks like we're coming close to the end of our recording time, but let's get out of this situation and pass the Flesh Raptor if we can. Speed up just a little bit. Now, is it hostile? No, see, I don't think it's going to be hostile to the other uh, to the other zombies because it was born from a zombie body. But let's see. My hearing, my hearing crashes, and the flesh raptor is doing what? Moving toward. Yeah, it looks like it's aggroed just toward myself here. Yeah, just keep driving, Kunji. Forget about it, man. We've got a gun, but we can take care of that stuff later. Oh yeah, there's a seat out here in the middle of the road. Hey, I know how that seat got there. The guy took his seat out, uh, cause he wanted to put a bed in. It's down. Is that a dead body up there, or? No, that's a living body. Which way do we go? Not up. Go this way. Let's go back to auto drive. So we're on day 74. So it looks like evolution is beginning to take hold. Flesh raptors emerging from the pu pulpating corpses. Why was it pulpating? Probably because it was killed by something else, and now some weird hybrid form is being created. Alright, here we go. We're getting... Uh-oh. One of these on the highway. 
Grakans who are ignoring me. An amoebic mold. Crusty bits of cytoplasm fall away as it oozes across the ground. There's a couple of amoebic molds here. And I think that's because there's probably a dead scientist nearby. There's a pressurized tank of liquid ammonia. Yup, bam, scientist. Got an engine there we could disassemble. Else is nearby. That's about it. Cargo pants. I love my cargo pants. Hopefully I can drive right past these weird alien creatures. Yeah, they never became hostile. Right, excellent. Uh-oh. There's already a monster at that location. So we just tried to spawn a monster in where there already was a monster. That's reassuring. Now I want to. The scarred zombie hits the giant bee but is stopped by its carapace. giant bee misses the scarred zombie. Let's have a look up here. I know that we did this once before, but that was before more evolution took place. Okay, here's each hive pod. I wonder if the bees are continually spawned by these. And here you go, scarred zombies. And you're battling the giant bees. It honestly seems like that's what was going on before, but the fact that the scarred zombies are wearing beekeeper hats is what's really weird. Yeah, there's beekeeping gloves here. This guy's wearing a beekeeping suit. <laughs> okay, so why are the beekeepers in there? I don't understand. Oh, what? What is that? Apis. Oh, there's an NPC at the center of the beehive. How cool is that? Alright folks, unfortunately we spent too much time playing with the car, but I hope we all learned something. Um, in the next episode, Kunji's gonna drive up here and pick up a whole bunch of zombies to lead back here and let them fight the bees, and we'll see what happens. Uh, if you want to, join me for the next episode, and uh, I'll see you then.